here at episode 52. Today's guest is Simon Kafka. He is a guitarist based in Brooklyn, has a band called the Big Hands Rhythm and Blues Band, have an excellent record out. He also backs up other musicians, so you may have seen him play with El King, uh, Carly Rae Jepsen, Duncan Sheik, a bunch of other people, and he also plays on Broadway shows, so he's been on The Lion King, Aladdin, Waitress, even more than that. Uh, he'll tell us about that. And he's going to show us an old Gibson L00 that he has, which is an awesome, awesome guitar. Let's say hello to Simon. Hello, how are you? Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Good. Uh, what have you been doing? Um, great question. Uh, it's been a busy pandemic, actually. Um, I've recorded an album of original music. Uh, I just finished the audio part of that, so I'm just working on the release strategy of that. And I've been taking piano lessons and working, uh, trying to learn classical piano pieces. Wow. What kind of album did you make? Is it a solo album? It's solo in that it's my name and it's going to be released under my name, but it's not solo in the fact that a lot of amazing people um, contributed to it. And there's all sorts of guest, there's guest singers and guest players, and, and um, I'm really excited about it. Ah, that's something to look forward to. And uh, you've been a piano player, so you just decided to take up classical no, piano? No, I did not know how to play at all. Um, it's something I always wanted to do. I love classical piano music. I love Chopin and Debussy and Beethoven and things like that. So with all this free time, I thought this was like the perfect opportunity. So I've been taking lessons and uh, yeah, bit by bit. It's been, yeah. you know, it's, it's been really fun to start something from scratch in that way. You have a pretty diverse resume from what I can tell. You've played with a lot of people, you have your own band, and I think uh, I'd love to hear some stories about the Broadway. Yeah, I started, you as well. Um, well, thank you for saying that. Um, I've been very lucky and fortunate in many ways. Um, the Broadway work started for me, you know, I got a phone call when I was about 25 saying that there was a, a guitarist in town, his name is Kevin Kuhn, he's I'm somebody I'm really close with, who was looking for a young guy that could sub for him on The Lion King, who didn't have a lot going on and would be available kind of when he needed. And that was when I was 25, I was catering and really <laughs> things weren't going uh, the way I wanted them to. So I fit that description perfectly. And, um, you know, I started working there and I'm still working there many years, many hundreds and hundreds of shows later. And then, it, you know, it kind of snowballed from there. I started working on other shows and just like, you know, it, it's been, uh, I, you know, it's been great. I, I really like working on Broadway. I love the hours. I love having free time during the day. Um, I like meeting people. I like playing guitar. So it's, it's, it's been, it's been a great experience. Mm. Also nice that, uh, you know, we all love touring, but occasionally it's really nice to be planted in one place for a while. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, touring is, I love touring for three weeks, <laughs> but yeah. you know, as cool as touring looks on Instagram, it can be, as you know, Gary, it can be exhausting to be in the airport every other day or in a hotel or wherever. So, um, there is something very nice about, you know, leaving my apartment at, you know, 6.45 and playing an 8 o'clock show and being home by 11.30. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, you also back up other artists. So obviously, we have, you know, there's word of mouth and there's a friend recommends you or yeah. you meet somebody. But how do you get a lot of those gigs? Yeah, I mean, a comp for me, it's been a combination of word of mouth and auditioning. I mean, the... Highest profile gig I had, I was touring with L. King when the X's and O's song, before the X's and O's, they were, well actually, they were looking, they were auditioning guitarists for, specifically for the song X's and O's, because they were a band before that, but they needed somebody to cover the lead part. And I had friends in that band, and they asked me to audition, and it went well, and I, yeah, I was with her for two years, and just went all over the world playing 
those songs. And yeah, it was, I was very fortunate to have that experience. Hmm. I think the friend in that band is our mutual friend, Dave Scalia. Well, no, actually this, this predates Dave. Ah, there was a different Dave drummer the and, um, when they were looking for a drummer, I, I, um, was very happy to recommend Dave uh, mm. for the job, and he has been doing an amazing job. And he's for anybody watching or listening to this, you know, really talented guy. He's the drummer on my record that's going to come out this year. Um, great player, yeah. But no, it was a different drummer named Elliot Jacobson before that. Oh uh, yeah. And um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a wild experience. That's great. Well, tell me about uh, the Skips in L Double O. So, this is a guitar. I chose this guitar. I'm really, I, I love acoustic guitar. It's my favorite thing to play. It's my favorite thing to listen to. Um, you know, I grew up listening to finger pickers, and it's what I love to do the most. And I, when I was really young, I, I was in Chicago. I think I was maybe 20 or 21. And at my first trip to Chicago Music Exchange, I played in L Double O. And I just, I loved it, and so many years later, uh, a few years ago, um, I found this one and I picked it up, and I just love everything about it. I mean, there's to me, there's nothing like an old acoustic guitar. I just think it's just it's inspiring to hold, it's inspiring to listen to. I love recording with it, I love performing with it, I love playing it, I love just having it around the house, I love writing on it. Um, yeah, I'm really lucky to own it. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, what is better than just an old, really beautiful acoustic? I love it. And you think that's uh, 1935 or the so? Guy I, so it's a peculiar story. Um, I picked it up from a, a gentleman. It was a Craigslist thing. No, that's not true. It was a G-based thing, but the guy was in New York, so we met up. And he had a very... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it was like a, um, the apartment wasn't in the best shape and uh, <laughs> it, it was bizarre and it was full of bizarre things and the man was very bizarre. And uh, yeah, I was trying the guitar out and right behind my head, I hear the sound of a drill. And for <laughs> about three seconds, I thought, I was like, oh, I'm being murdered this is what's going to happen. And I was like, Oh yeah, this is like a thing. This is, this happens, you know, uh, turns out he was just like fixing something in this wall right behind my head, but <laughs> and he just couldn't wait. He couldn't wait. It couldn't wait. Left. It couldn't wait. But it was, you know, it was, it was a crazy experience and, um, he had two and yeah, I just fell in love with this one. I thought it had the most amount of character and, um, yeah, I love playing it. It was a, it was a crazy, and I think about that wild experience <laughs> I had picking it up at on the in the Upper East Side a few years ago. Huh. And is this guitar featured on the record you just made? Yeah, every, every it's on every track, and I wrote every song on it as well. Excellent. Oh, well, give us an example. You could play a song or just noodle around, whatever you feel like doing. Um, so to me, it just has this woody tone. My favorite um, guitarist ever, my favorite musician maybe ever, is Elizabeth Cotton. Oh. And um, I love her and I love her songs. Freight Train is my, is my favorite song uh, in the history of songs. Um, it's a good one. It's a really good one. And I know she plays that song on a Martin, uh, but I love playing that song on. There's something about a Gibson that I really love. So. Yeah. That one sticks in your head all day. It did. I mean, I just, it's yeah. such a great song. And, uh, also, I really, really love the song Don't Think Twice by Bob Dylan. And uh, to me, when, I hope it stays in tune when I put a capo on it, but to me, when I capo it in that... To me, it sounds like 
the recording when I play it up there. So it makes me really yeah. happy. I love it. You know, the amazing thing about you, you hear about Bob Dylan endlessly, you don't really hear people talk about his guitar playing. You know, those first few records, he is fantastic. On I agree. Guitar. What I've heard and I'm not sure of, and maybe somebody watching or listening to this does know, I don't think that's him on the recording. I'm really? Twice. He, that's what I've read, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, hmm. But I agree with you that he is amazing. Yeah. I hate hearing that. I hope that's not true. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> in the same way, like John Lennon is one of my favorite guitar players. Like, I just love the rhythm stuff he does and the finger picking stuff he does. You know. Yeah. What else you got? As you far play as playing or guitars? Yeah. Well, you can play the Bob Dylan song if you mm. want. You can noodle through it. guitar really does have that old time sound it does i love it yeah i mean i'm a huge fan of the country blues and and all those field recordings alan lomax field recordings and uh to me this just <laughs> I can't put this guitar down when I have it in my arms. Well, great, man. Thank you. Thanks for showing us that. I uh, look forward to hearing your record. Thank you. When um, do you think that's going to If I could plug one more thing. Yeah, please. If you don't mind. I'm in a band called Big Hands Rhythm and Blues Band, and we put a record out on rope a a couple years ago that I think, uh, um, I really love this record. I think it's great. And so if anybody watching this wants to check that out, um, please do. And, you know, we have done some touring. And uh, we were in Eastern Europe in 2019, and, and we play uh, in New York City. You know, when concerts happen again, um, we will be playing. Hmm. Uh, Andy from Ropa Dope is one of my very old pals. I haven't seen him in it's years. A great, it's a great company, and, uh, you know, Lewis. And I have nothing but great things to say about them. Yeah, great, man. All right, well, enjoy your day. Thank Thanks you so for showing much. us that. Yeah, man. It's been such a See pleasure. Th I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Cool. See you later. See ya. Thanks to Simon Kafka for joining us today. And it's great to hear that Gibson L00. Those 1930s ones always sound amazing. And especially when you play that finger style guitar that he was just playing. Love to hear it. Check back in a couple days for the next episode of Let's Hear It.